Dun dun dun. Blue thing spinning. There's a blue thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Blue yeah. thing not spinning. We're yeah. live. We're, oh, oh, we're live. Shoot. We're live. For we're another live. edition of 10 Questions. Another edition. Another, another brave soul coming to the gauntlet to face the 10 questions. <laughs> Bruh. I am very prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, not at all. <laughs> what? No, I was like, what is your name? No. <laughs> we got Jay Horns with us today, an active participant in the music scene of Columbus, the smoke scene in Columbus. Can we say that? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I so I put up this, this cute little rhyme about how I came upon the information that you were doing this thing. And I... I you didn't lose him, did you? You there, Jay? I did. Oh, what are you doing? Call him back. It just hung up for some reason. You just hung up on him. Why are we hanging up on the poor guy? Already? I wonder if something flipped out on him. Maybe his phone died. Oh, that would be the worst. That would be the worst. That would be the worst. That would be so funny. <laughs> that's so on point. Funny. That's us all day long. That's, that's yeah. us going... Well, shoot! I had to I had to charge the phone. It was at like two percent when I grabbed it. <laughs> Did we kill the phone? Is that what? Hello. 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 Is there anybody, anybody out there? Anybody out there? I don't think he's connected at the moment. Does it show him connected? It shows him connected, but it doesn't. It I cannot shows hear the him. Time, but it doesn't. Well, we should hang up and do it again, just to see. Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? This is not a problem we have ever had. No. Oh, it is not. answer the phone. That's your no, phone. No, no, it's... Plug it in and answer it. Answer it first, maybe. Hang on a second. Hey, can you Hey, hear Jay, us? are you there? Yes, I am here. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. It was like as literally as soon as you said, I wrote a little rhyme, it was like, nah, never mind. <laughs> Lost connection. Well, the beautiful thing was that we're sitting here. Do you think it was our phone going dead or his phone going dead? Did the phone go dead? And I was looking at Ross going, that is so us all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Ran random mishap is definitely part of the universe's joy. You know, a little oh, bit yeah, most definitely. Ch chaos is uh, what, what normally starts in the new adventures right yeah right it, it's so true that I, I try to explain to people this weird adventure i'm on because we're the goal here is to build a non-profit where people can be heard you know where so that the studio has voices beyond just words but music and everything we're the people we're talking to it's okay let's, let's start with the first question where are you from jay <laughs> What was the first question? Where are you from? From Columbus, Ohio. So born and bred. You've been here the whole time? Yep. Yep. I mean, I've traveled around for shows and such and kind of stayed for weeks and months on end in other places, but always come back to Ohio. It seems I always wanted to run away, but the more I go away, I always get drawn right back here. That I you know, starting to build a little empire here. So Right. I totally relate to that. Kind of hard though. to leave now. Because... You know what? Every dream was how am I going to get out of, you know, I'm in Gehenna. Don't get me wrong. Every I left. dream right. was literally how do you get out of Columbus until you get out of Columbus. And then you're like, you know what? I kind of like I kind of like where I'm from. I, I kind of like that I place. Realized that I, right. I was like, now I have to start all over again. You know how much yeah. work it took me to get to this point to where I'm like, okay, I can leave. Wait, <laughs> do I have to do it again? No. <laughs> I think I was going to make it a little bit stronger here and we'll visit other places, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, right. I used to, to drive around a lot. I drove truck and it, I loved the excitement of big cities. And man, I, I got really used to the feeling of, oh, okay, and it's, you know, let's come home and just kind of quietly be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost nice to have the two in a different place. I love Chicago. Yeah. I don't want to drive in Chicago every day. I don't want to live in No, New York exactly. Every day. It's like I, I love, love Denver, but 15 minutes here is two hours there. I, I, yes. Yeah. Exactly. That. DC is a fun place to visit. And rent is through oh. the fucking roof. Well, yeah, we, we we do fairly well. I mean, you start getting coastal or, you know, mountain, and yeah, price goes up drastically all of a sudden. 
Not that Columbus is cheap these days, brother, to be investing in real estate and whatnot. Yeah, it's definitely going up here, too. But we're one of the fastest-growing cities, so that's something to look forward to, I guess. So the next question is one that means a lot to me because, like, when I, I look back, I have kind of one of those memories where I can close my eyes and see specific moments, you know, that I'm very uh, attached to different pieces, so so much so that, like, the, the tricycle that I rode when I was three years old is in the room next to this one, you know? <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, nice. That, because there's there's like real memories attached to it. It was great for picking up yeah. girls. I was three or four. <laughs> Why somewhere in my head is the idea that this tricycle was great for picking up girls? <laughs> <laughs> that was your chick magnet, man. That it was, was my chick magnet. That was, was. It, it had to be. Well, you could... Because of the way it's built, it's one of those old school ones, and it's a Schwinn. I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 that's why well, it's held You have a rider on the back. Oh, yeah. man, you get the girl on the seat, and then you push. She don't even have to push. She, <laughs> she don't even have to, to use, her, use her legs. You do all the work. You got to lean over <laughs> and hold the, the handlebars. Okay, this is four-year-old logic I'm talking about. I mean, this memory. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weirdest thing. <laughs> Man, if you wanted girls to play doctor, you needed to have a good tricycle. That's all I'm ever going to say about the rest of that story. But, Jay, what are your first <laughs> memories in Columbus like? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I mean, honestly, a lot of my childhood's pretty patchy just from being always into, like, extreme sports and stuff. I yeah. kind of fell along. <laughs> I love skateboarding and stuff like that and then trying to learn it at a young age. But I'd say, like, the earliest memory I have um, actually is, like, one of the first times I ever got hurt really bad. And I was uh, downstairs in my basement uh, listening to Digital Underground. I was probably five, four or five years old. And I uh, took my Hulk Hogan wrestling doll and elbow dropped him through my glass table in the living room. (laughs) And I just remember laying there like, what just happened? And then getting rushed away. And my mom was like, you didn't even cry or anything. I was like, I didn't even know if I was alive. (laughs) If, if if, If you had lived in a time where somebody had had a camera ready, you could have retired that day for the rest of your life. Based oh, on no, exactly. Right. <laughs> I, I, like, I'm picturing this in my head. That's a viral video right there. <laughs> yeah, I had the whole kind of, like, stuffy wrestling doll that talked back to you and shit and mm-hmm. fucking bump and bitch underground. Jump, run up on the couch, jump right through the glass table, like, boom. <laughs> my mom probably throws her wine on the ground. What happened? <laughs> oh, the best is the wine. Oh, my God. <laughs> You interrupted my my grapeness. <laughs> I just imagine the the Hulk Hogan doll just going off. Brother, hey, amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, and though I know it's not true, I I picture you in the full WWE slash F always in my head. I, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've got you in the right. I've got you in the the singlet and the head. <laughs> Yeah, not not once have I ever been caught in a onesie. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I promise, for the rest of my life, in my head, I remember the day you wore the onesie. <laughs> as long as it was bright yellow and red, like Hulkamania, right, exactly. man. Exactly. I'm gonna get you, brother. I'm gonna get you, brother. <laughs> no, that was that was a little bit more macho. Man. Cage match. <laughs> <laughs> so so, how do you work? How do I work? That is an extensive question. Right. <laughs> um, so I like, kind of done a little bit of everything along my time. Uh, right now, I'm just up here working on building the front half of the studio and stuff and kind of trying to bring as many new artists and local artists in up here to kind of just have a shot and an opportunity. Right. You know, try uh. to do shows as much as possible. That pretty much where i'm at with it and then i mean i I have also been managing a couple smoke shops uh, throughout columbus puff palace oh wow okay you're busy industry and stuff like so i kind of try to mix the two together with when i'm making my studio you know what i mean well yeah i was reading the stuff that you were wanting to have in there going wow no it's that's a place to chill now part of me Um, the only thing missing is it needs a tattoo studio but that's just my thought. Yeah. That some chairs where people are throwing ink down. Well, it's it's a different issue than with all of the permits. So I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same. Like, 
I had a guy offer to put his little barber chair in here as well, and it's the same permits for that. And I'm just like, man, I want to keep it to what I want to do and stuff. I actually tattooed for a couple years myself. It's just not. It's one of those industries where it's like you want to do it the whole time you're growing up, and then you start doing it, and it's like, man, I don't want to do a bunch of stuff that other people want me to do, like dumb yeah. little flowers, mm. and I'm gonna write forever, a twenty times over in cursive, and I can't even write cursive. Like, in in it's just, cursive, you're I mean, drawing a bunch of stuff that people want I mean, you to draw. And stuff, and it's got to be forever in the infinity sign. Need my birthday on my wrist. I need right, I need. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the dumbest thing. So it's like it kind of took away from the art for me. So I kind of stick away from the tattoo aspect of everything i want to I, mean, I love tattoos don't get me wrong but it's just not it's not my way to express myself i want to go to a tattoo move. shop and be like surprise me i want to i want to go and make <laughs> i want to make their day oh, <laughs> just that's be like got, surprise me man hey, that, that's how i got 90 percent of my tattoos my friend was uh locked up for like five years he robbed a gas station with a shotgun <laughs> and when he uh got out i was like where the fuck were you man he's like oh, i robbed a gas station i was like what the fuck <laughs> 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 But he's like, I was like, where are you staying at? He's like, I ain't got nowhere to stay. I was like, cool, you can stay here, but you got to tattoo me every day. And oh. so every day I get off work, and I was working at a head shop at the time. I get off work, and he, I'd be like, do whatever you want, just pick doodle, a spot, just <laughs> and he'd start drawing. That's so like, I got my entire stomach and my left sleeve done pretty much off of like I gave hints here and there, but <laughs> I got tatted every day for six months and got That's all crazy. my shit for pretty much. Free. That's brilliant, dude. What yeah. holds me back? As far as you know, no, I know what goes where, and I can picture it. I that I know it, I've spent too much time between tattoos, if that makes sense to you, where you're like, yeah. oh yeah, that spot. I know what goes. Yeah, that one. Okay, I've got a design for between my shoulder blades. I've got. <laughs> right, and I was just like, dude, just go. Like, I got a kind of like idea, and just run with it. Whatever you want to do, do that here. Do. And he'd be like, I don't feel like drawing today. I'm like, well, how about over here on my ribs? If you just put like my girlfriend's face as a dead zombie or something because she's a bitch and you're like oh fuck yeah dude that sounds great <laughs> well it's it's writer's prompts for artists though that's the i love that that so one of the things we're working on speaking of work is a contest where what we're gonna do is once a week drop like five beats and so that everybody right. then can play around with those five beats and at the like end of the week every week we do a show where what we do is talk about things like which you know pick out from what are best but also sometimes maybe play two people that took the same beat totally different ways right exactly i'm actually doing something kind of like that as well but not um as soon more or less i'm uh i'm trying to have a bunch of producers bring beats up here that we can keep into a package where when people come in without the beat they can buy it and use that beat, but there's other artists can well as well use those beats. And then at the end of the season, we're gonna go back through and try to do like a March Madness type deal. Oh, absolutely, I, I'd love to be. I'd love to be involved. In all honesty, I I'd got love, I got yeah. some beat. I got some beats that might help out. I, the, I, I, and I make beats. We have <laughs> a, so we have a new theory. A thing we're trying to push inside our Discord is the idea that it's all musicians, that yeah. artists, producers. In the end, what a producer is doing is full arrangement. It's so much more than hey producer if that right. you know right. and we're pushing people don't understand the whole process a lot of the yeah. time especially if they're not in the industry that's why we kind of pride ourselves as being artists that are helping you go through the whole process you know what i mean we're not just some joe schmo out here thinking we know what we're right. talking about like we've actually paid other people to do everything we're helping you do yes absolutely right mm. that one of the things so we're pushing a new model and this is not i'm not in judgment of anybody else's model yeah no go ahead go ahead we're we're looking at the idea of there's a split and it should be percentages and both should be represented equally so that we're looking right for, like on the, on the uploads yeah well right so literally we're looking at producers with the idea of no we don't want to pay you 100 or 200 dollars if this to, hits yeah. we want you to be just as rich yeah because right. like so Ross has two new songs coming out and one shit when the dude that produced it's in Ukraine and doesn't speak any English and the other one was produced in Nigeria by a friend of ours named Simon at another studio who, right. that and so those the way they're going to go out are going to be Ross and that person you know RJ, RJ doing it with like we're thinking right now that when the one drops, I mean, it's just like what Timberland would do. You know what I mean? You yes. release your shit with them, type shit, right? Yeah. Obviously, it's better than been doing this stuff for a little longer. But that's kind of the idea that he went for. You know, it was kind of like, hey, I'm 
here. I'm a big part of this. Da, da, da. Well, so, I mean, I'm not. I completely, I, I completely see the vision on it. I mean, but in the same aspect, it's like I feel like there's just so many more ways, uh, or not ways. But I mean, are you saying like it would be um, like exclusive in that sense? Or would it be well, like, no, um, like other a, people more like a revolutionary situation? Thing? Who cares how many people use the beat? That's some bullshit. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm, I guess that's what I was getting at more or less. That, and when, that, I, like, when some I, people are like, oh well, yeah, we do that, but then no one else can use this. Well, like, or on. you offer people the beats in a way that's like you can use these, but then if you produce something, what you have to do is go to the guy that made the beat and go, do you believe in this enough that we should release it? Right. And if you believe and see, it, with the producers yeah. that we're working with, they're like, they're honestly like, I don't even, I don't like as long as they tag me in the beat and put my name in the mm, title, yeah. and that shit, like that's all they care about. They're like, I really don't care about want, getting money that yeah. much money from them. You know what I mean, da, da, da. and that's where we kind of came up with our idea. Like, I love okay, it. Well, we split it, make it a real low price where everyone can kind of afford it, and then talk people out of. Because like literally our first five sessions here, guys, like younger kids came in. 16 years old and was like pick me a youtube beat like you don't even know what song they're like no it doesn't matter and then they do it and then they kill it yeah. like absolutely they, kill yeah. it and i'm like dude like you're wasting your talent on this beat where you don't actually own anything you know right. what i mean like so i'm trying to help them out and then no i agree in that sense whereas at least as long as you're if you're going to use one of these cheaper free beats at least be somebody local and let you have some rights to it you know what i mean that was Ooh. that was the idea behind the discord is that we want it to be possible for people to work together and actually collaborate with each other as opposed right. to just going on YouTube and finding type beats of random people, you know? Yeah. Because we're all random people, but we should be right. like conversating be as part of the process. Yeah. We should be a part of the process. It it's, shouldn't be like a no blind situation where like you don't even know I bought your beat. It should right. be musicians you know? working you know together. I mean? like, yeah. It should be like, oh, let me hear that song that you just bought the beat off me. I want to hear what, what you did with it. Type. That, right. That it's meaningful. That it's like, well, no, wait a minute. We're a bunch of musicians that love frigging music. Right. That right. more like, than anything else. The beats is, they love music just as much as the artist. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. And sometimes, and then if, because then instead of it ending up, I mean, and you've heard the stuff where it sounds like they plastered a song on top of the beat. It's good, but the mastering's not good. <laughs> <laughs> got music going. <laughs> Sorry, the, my, one of my engineers is in there mixing the track right now. I had it's beautiful. <laughs> nah, I, dude, it's music. I it, Literally, when I heard your story, I was like, holy shit, where's my brother? I need to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beautiful thing is, it's it's the different perspectives that's going to figure it out. I had Reggie right. Reg of Crash Crew on here last night telling us we're the future of music. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Mind blown, brother. He looks at us and he like he wants inspiration from all of us younger guys. They they all they want to do a song called We're Here. They want to come back. All like he's work he works with Curtis Blow. He works like he, he's the guys he's hanging out with are all the old guys that did rap in the early 80s. Right. And they're doing a thing called Hush Tours in New York where you go on hip hop tours. So we have a connection to all these guys that are just going, do you remember me? And, <laughs> oh, wow. right, right. So it that comes, my it's, you know what? So it sounds like we're both working in the same direction. And the next yeah. question is, you know what? How do you play? <laughs> I, the funny thing is, is I play the same way I work. <laughs> Ooh, I love it, it's powerful. <laughs> There's not really anything much else. I mean, I like to do, you know, I mean, fun stuff like kayaking or whatever, but mainly like funnest times, happiest moments are me here in the studio working on a track or helping somebody else complete their vision. You know what I mean? Right. More or less, I like just talking to people, figuring out what their dream is, and then helping them bring that dream to fruition. You know what I mean? To to the full fucking force that it could be. Like that's that's my fun. <laughs> dude, dude, you're giving our speech. Yeah. I swear to God, you're giving our speech. That you know what my current dilemma is starting a nonprofit is very expensive and I'm broke, but yes. I don't <laughs> care. One of the thing one of the things <laughs> that makes this less scary is finding other people that are doing similar things to us. Mm. That's one of the things like like finding finding you and getting to talk to you and right, being able to experience this. It feels it feels good to know that you're not 
alone in this, you know? Yeah, part of a wave. Part of a wave. Over exactly. and over again, the more, the, yeah. The first wave here. The more people I talk to, it's like, wait a minute, no, we're all waking up. And we're all looking yeah. around going, <laughs> we let the children run the place. The rest of us had our heads down. We were trying to take care of our families. We were doing the responsible thing. The problem is that the only people that end up in power in that situation are people that are self-obsessed enough to care less about the other people. That's not a right. good leadership, exactly. you know. <laughs> and it's like the whole, like our whole spiel basically too is on top of it all. It's like we're trying to give you, and not you, but like everyone that wants to, um, <laughs> the same opportunities that a record label would give you and then take 20% or 50 or 80%. Yes. You know, yeah. Like, and we're just here for the ride. Like, just shout us out when you blow up or make a yep. good song. We're like, yep, I made it over here. Like, <laughs> that's all we care about is because it's all about the ride. You know? I mean, we're that's... all oh my trying God. to just get more people to pay attention to us, and you're only going to do that by having more friends, basically. Right. I... Having so, more friends. Have you met my, my friends? Have, so my big – Yeah. <laughs> so what I keep saying over and over again is the most powerful thing I can do is just keep going, hey, have you met my friends? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, have you met my friends? That – at this point, we started this on January 10th of this year. Our fingers touch every continent on Earth except Antarctica. We have people nice. we're in communication with everywhere. You know, some days I'll get a, I've got a buddy that randomly texts me that works at the safari park in Abu Dhabi, and we talk about how hot it is in UAE. <laughs> <laughs> He randomly did. So I, I, I have this weird uh, friend group that I just have kind of accepted everybody and gone out there and been me as opposed to trying right. to be fake or like, and it, amazingly enough, when you go out there and tell your story and you're honest mm -hmm. and you're you and you. It's passion, man. People follow right? passion. That's why people like music because it's like passion with a beat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You, you speak your passion it's like uh, it's a language that crosses all barriers like it doesn't matter like I could you could not even be speaking the same language as me but if you're telling me your story I could just see it in your face right like you know what I mean that you're speaking about something you love or hear it in your vo voice or your tones you know I was Man. listening to that Ukrainian guy's uh, music the guy that produced the the song the I song did. for you yeah and I was like yo I don't know what you said but I felt it. It was good. Exactly. It was amazing. <laughs> Dude, we didn't even... What amazes me is I, I couldn't have planned promotionally the idea that it would be awesome for a song made in Columbus, Ohio to get produced in Ukraine in the current situation. There's no amount of us involved with that other than the universe going, hey, this is meaningful. And you're just like, you fall back in amazement over and over again as these pieces just keep falling in place that oh yeah man we were Not talking to our buddy calvin hobbs um another musician and we do all of these under the stories project so that in my head music art you know my writing any of those things yeah that story everybody needs to get their story out to mm. make noise to be heard that's our motto make noise be heard and it doesn't mean just us, it means everybody. You know what, no, we gotta make some noise. We gotta tell our stories to each other and connect. That I'm not making connections, I'm kinda like showing people we're still connected. That, right. You know what, we used to do a show called The Farm Report where literally my thought behind it was, watch this, I can reach out and tap people on their shoulders anywhere in the world and ask how the weather is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so in this process, we were talking to Calvin Hobbes about, you know, first you get work, then you get play, and then you get what's prayer. And he said, you know what, the music is my prayer. It's, it's the place I'm connected, I'm grounded, it's my meditation. And in that moment, I was I, like, no, man, yeah, this show is my prayer. Yeah. This show <laughs> is my meaning, that this thing you and I are doing where I get to feel connected and not alone. I see the relative, I keep, I see myself in your answers and that helps me right. even understand myself more in my desire to see through other people's eyes. So the next question in the gauntlet is how do you pray? 
um, that's, I mean, a lot of the same things you were talking about right there. I mean, like when I'm in the studio and I'm sitting there writing a verse like that, and like, I feel like that's my time between me and the universe. You know what I mean? I really don't mm -hmm. believe in any one religion or anything. I'm more of a universe provides kind of guy, you know what I mean? And I feel like yeah, the music is my way to connect. And I always try to, when I'm sitting there by myself in the studio, especially is the most closest I feel on yeah. stage is one thing but that's like my connection with like the people and stuff you know the energy uh, when I'm, yeah it's just me and when it's me in the studio just me and the microphone it's like i just got a big amplified voice to whoever's listening type shit upstairs you know man Ooh, I like that. the way that i feel after i just finished a verse or i just finished a song and i'm like i just wrote that i like just just that 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 that, was, yeah. it's, it's like that it's same massive thing when you have babies you're looking at the baby going oh my god that came out of you <laughs> right <laughs> the crazy thing is i had i had my three-year-old in here two nights ago and i let her like do a little oh. thing on the microphone okay. and i you know, I mean, did my did my production to it and i got a bunch of plugins and fancy stuff you know Hell yeah. so i took her one take and i made it into a whole song basically for oh, her god, and she was yeah. like that's not that's me like what she's <laughs> like i'm really good dad <laughs> Just promise me she's not named Haley. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because it's moving. Like, so when we did on Memorial Day, we did a midnight to midnight show. So we did a 24 hour show. And right. we did a bunch of these 10 questions with people all over the world. But one of the people I did it with was my nine year old grandson. That these are questions we've been thinking about since we were little right that the ways in which we define ourselves and now most you end up somewhere and everybody wants to ask about what was your you know accomplishment, accomplishment. Yeah, what you know how do you define yourself relative to this current metric yeah. and we've avoided right. that the idea so the nine-year-old soon actually will be doing a twitch stream we'll never okay. see you'll never see the nine-year-old that bent hayes will always be a voice and not a face and I'll be the face. I'm going to do old dude calling color commentary on video game. Yeah. <laughs> and Perfect. you know, almost like a baseball game, definitely cross demographics. And actually the other day we we've, we've talked now and and my buddy RJ over there might do some like they're going to play and neither of them be seen because I was watching them. We got an extra Xbox for down in the studio to do this. And so yeah. it actually the guys accidentally left a Mortal Kombat CD in it. And so <laughs> RJ and Bent were playing hardcore, you know, Mortal Kombat. And oh my god, it would have been video gold because it would have been me calling color commentary on what was going on as Ross was explaining button mashing and just mash oh, yeah. buttons harder. You just gotta harder. mash buttons harder. That's all you do. That's how you win in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> mash like, the buttons a little harder. And the next day he he started beating me. So I was like, yeah, he gets it. He gets, he gets it, it now. He, I've, I've taught him everything I can. <laughs> Mortal Kombat is the ultimate button it's masher the ultimate. too. <laughs> it, is, it is. I never learned nothing I didn't push harder circles. Just push the buttons harder. <laughs> <laughs> it does not work with the ladies. I'll tell you that much. Right, <laughs> button mashing doesn't get you no. far. Well, no. it depends on the lady. You need some technique. At least get yeah, hit the joystick a little. Bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Small circles. Small circles. <laughs> well, that so by the end of it, because his twi Ben's Twitch stream will be primarily um, Fortnite and maybe a little bit of Roblox, but by the end of it, I'm going okay about four or five times a month. I, I need to pick something off battle, not battle pass. Uh, uh, we do game Xbox, pass? so we do game pass, game pass. and I'm going to pick like, you know, every month, three or four old school games and yeah. just hand, like go live on a show that they've never played the game before. <laughs> <laughs> There's this there's this one game called one hit uh -huh. and it's literally just you go back and forth with one hit you have one hit to kill them and you get you get like three rounds and you have one hit and you just gotta you gotta you gotta get them first that's all that's like uh that's like old school like war pigs or worms basically yep. <laughs> oh my oh. god i'm gonna make you guys play pong no <laughs> it's obviously 
it's obvious to us all that work, play, pray kind of goes together for the three of us. And I think that's meaningful. I, I find that those moments where those three things are all one thing. Yeah. Oh. They're like the perfect moments. Well, yeah, I've got a beautiful friend in Vietnam that endlessly teaches me that uh, meditation is non-distraction. That's it. Don't attach anything more to it. Meditation is non-distraction. It's when you're doing, you're doing. And so that work, play, well, play Nothing moment, else will break you out of your zone type stuff. Yeah. That work, play, when work, play, pray are one, it's meditation. You're there. Yeah. It's, it's a part of you. And you know what? It brings us to the next question. What do you love? <laughs> what do I love? I mean, I love my kids more than anything, but the music is a fast one right behind it. Mm, yeah, right? Isn't it amazing? I, I'll say this. My biggest guru is the nine-year-old, though, man. I, I kind yeah. of... I'm at the point no, of trying same. to I've meet done. the whole world that way, and he <laughs> taught me some shit. Go ahead. I was going to say, I also have a nine-year-old little girl. Mm. And yeah, she's, <laughs> it's crazy when them two get together. I just get in conversations with just them and nobody else around. I'm just like, what? <laughs> they, they're thinking stuff though. out. They, just, they yeah. definitely see the world in a whole nother light. And then the fact that like, she's experiencing it through my experiences that I've taught her. And then she's looking back like, oh, boy, you might have seen it like this, but you right. don't even realize that you just taught me to see it this whole other way type shit. I'm like, wow. <laughs> You just explained 10 questions perfectly. That <laughs> over and over again, it's like having these... So we talk constantly about how it's changing us. Right. I mean, literally changing us. And because everybody brings... Everybody's looking at the same thing, actually. You know, it, it, what you said about religion resonates so deep to me because in my head, I'm like, why are you guys fighting over nomenclature? You're obviously all trying to describe right, the same is thing. Everything touched by man, so why yeah. do you believe any of it? Right. Well, I go from astrophysics to Zorio, Zoroastrianism. Wow, man, that's a hard one some days. <laughs> but A to Z, I did work. I eventually found my appropriate Z to go on the end. Um, but the idea that from science to religion, unified field theory, folks, we're all talking about the same stuff. You we're know, all, yes, we're all living in the same world if you really think about it. Right. Yeah. That I'm I'm all about those mice, those those blind mice trying to define an elephant, and they all see it differently. <laughs> but that what if with seven and a half billion perspectives we could actually see the fucking elephant in the room? That but I think that the point of it is is not to try to see the elephant to just to understand that it's there and whatever mm. it is is what it is. You know? I got you. But I think when we try to define it, that's what the problem is. There'll mm. never be a definition or a a proper wording or anything because Ooh. it's. It's not something that can be put into words or explained because it's not of, you know what I mean? Words are cages that always Wait. fall short. Yeah, words are just another aspect of man. Yeah, oh no, just, I agree wholeheartedly. It's flawed, so it's like you just have to kind of go with it almost, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is, right. I mean, even even Kanye West says, like when he's talking about the stuff, he's like, yeah, it's this and that, but really it's just the fact that my faith helped me be fearless. I thought it was his watch. I thought it was all about his oh, watch. Yeah, it was his watch. <laughs> Dude, I got to the end of that album, and I literally cussed when he went, and when he started talking about his watch I'm again. I'm not saying he has great music or anything, but I mean, the, the man has, definitely has a vision, you know what I mean? I have, I want to do a remix of Donda that I've been told I should never talk about. Oh, my where God. We speed, <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, where we speed up the heartbeat. Yeah. So, so I suggest that there's a reason why his mom might have had a faster heartbeat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's horrible. He's he's horrible. Just, just aspects terrible. of man. It's we're all flawed, man. It's all, <laughs> we are all flawed. Well, I have trouble not seeing the silly in it all. It's a mite yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Why am I not telling jokes about it? I mean, I'm sure that's why I have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, Ross Ross is very aware that my favorite place to play is in the DMZ. Oh yeah, definitely. Where everybody will shoot at me. It freaks me the heck. <laughs> out so <laughs> that <laughs> that rolls straight into our next question with what do you fear Whew. they get harder it's oh, like no. it's like hot ones I don't really think about that that much. <laughs> yeah, um, you said what they get hotter it's like hot wings 
like the hot is it hot, hot ones? ones right yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> the wings are getting hotter as you go <laughs> i mean i guess i don't know i guess i feel i i would say i fear failure but i really don't fear failure because mm. failure just helps me become better the next time i don't know i don't really have many things that i fear you know yeah um, i'm not as attached to I it i try to work. use that as my aspect of building anything I was scared of or like growing up or anything like that, I kind of just faced it to make myself try to be better. Like I used to be scared of heights and then I started doing steel framing where I was up on lifts and stuff, <laughs> 20, 30 stories in the sky. I was going to say steel is serious like, work. Most of our fears are just things you want to try that you're, you know, I mean, you should probably just do it. You still got a red hard <laughs> hat or not? No, no. <laughs> Mine was white, but Oh, that's messed up. No, steel guys are supposed to have red. I, I like I worked at getting a red one though. I don't know what happened to it. Because I labor as opposed to anything skilled, but Right. I, I was after there were some better hats, you know. There are better ones, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I like the traditional I probably orange. had the one that was reused. They're like, give this to the new guy. Hey, this cracked one should work. Wait, this wait a minute. One should yeah. work. You can't tell it's cracked. There's stickers on it. <laughs> yeah, always <laughs> stickers. Oh, this is my sticker so I can get in here. And then I got a sticker over here that says I'm a lot on this site. And I got another sticker over here that says I'm just a fucking idiot that is union labor. <laughs> By the way, me dumb. <laughs> I see screw in board. Wear carpenter so I can move it. <laughs> Man, the union rules are insane. I remember oh, a no, union. they're ridiculous. Uh I, I did not. I mean, I liked doing it as an experience or whatever, and learning how to do stuff. But it was just not for me. I was nothing. That was. I tried yeah. to do anything extra. They're like, no, no, you got to buy. OSHA's about to be on site right now, dude. Like what? <laughs> yes. Like, Let me just go across these beams and screw it in. They're like, no, you have to have a harness. We don't have any harnesses. So mm -hmm. I'm going on fucking lunch. But <laughs> <laughs> what else can you do? I mean, that that OSHA right. will eat you up. Little guys, they just demolish. <laughs> But I totally, I relate to what you're saying. So I got bit by a brown recluse when I was about 11 um, on my leg, on my foot. I did not realize it was a brown recluse. My leg swelled up to unreasonable amounts. Um, reasonably, I suppose, I ended up with kind of a fear of spiders. <laughs> yeah. Being that so I never saw the brown recluse that bit me, ever. <laughs> <laughs> and no, That's I funny because, like, when I was younger, I got... I actually got stung by a ridiculous amount of bees, mm. died for a couple of seconds or whatever until they gave me the, the shot. And then I found out I was allergic to bees. So like for a while there, I was super scared of bees. Right. But right. then I heard this thing. I don't remember where I heard it, but it was something about like bees are only attracted to high people. Mm. So like when bees are around you, that just means that you operate on a higher frequency. Da, da, da. And I was like, well, I can just chalk that up as – that's why I got stung a bunch of times because I'm meant to be great, you know? <laughs> well, you know, the, to some extent, when I look at the kids and tell them is you're not a fucking flower. Um, if you start swatting at them or go into their territory, though, they will defend it. So their job is to come. Yeah, get I stuck me. my hand in their nest. <laughs> yeah, mind. see you, nah, nah, man. Yeah, it was your see, energy. It was, it was your energy. Yeah, yeah. Sure. But did Pooh Bear get honey out of the hive? Is the question. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I, I woke up. And, I woke up and, and they said like, that what? I died for a little bit. <laughs> There's no honey. I really didn't even remember that part until I was talking to my dad. Actually, like. A year and a half ago, I just I vaguely remember getting stung, but he was like, "Yeah, no, you were dead for a couple of seconds." I was really scared. I was like, "What?" I didn't the, even know that. The funny thing is, the summer like of the brown it, I recluse, guess. I stepped on two bees. I'm also, though not severely allergic to bees, the combination was enough that I got treated for asthma for a number of years because of the day I came down the stairs going, "I can't breathe," and then collapsed on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. But what was my so, response? I mean, show. All great people have to, like, almost die, you know? Yeah, right? <laughs> Many Just times. Put you into a higher state of being. Man, o I did. Often <laughs> when asking women out on dates. But anyway. <laughs> my near, my near death is I apparently didn't breathe when I was born. I, I, j I didn't cry for about an hour. And they, they could see that I was alive, but I wasn't, like, I wasn't like breathing actively doing yeah, it. Yeah, like I You're wasn't like, actively water. doing the thing. What do I do? You were debating. <laughs> yes. You were at the debate. I was at the debate stage. <laughs> this is how to we breathe. 
breathe or not, not to, to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so I move out of my parents' house, and one of the first things I have to buy is a tarantula to let walk around on me so that I can get over my fear of spiders. Yes. <laughs> gotta heck? fucking do it. Come on. That's man. step one. And, and the worst part is I want another tarantula. I don't have any tarantulas right now, but I yeah, really... Yeah, I'm definitely afraid of tarantulas. There's okay, Not so really. But... You're going to have to get over to the office because it's kind I of guess. an animal paradise. I mean, there's a snake that eats fish. There's an axolotl. There's a three-year-old parrot head cichlid that only eats out of my hands. There's a 300-gallon pond in the basement. There's with a koi. tortoise. There's a tortoise. There's two turtles. <laughs> there's an iguana upstairs. There's yeah. three cats. There's quite a few fish. There's two new dogs. Yeah, there's two uh, new dogs, yeah. Boxer bulldog. They're really cute. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that all three all three uh, cats are still here. Cause they, you know what? Yeah, they get I irritated they with really the puppies. <laughs> but the, to some extent, yeah, dude, I feel it. I don't. Uh, my issue right now is people are telling me things I should be fearing, and I'm not. That I honestly believe what we're doing is meaningful and it's going to work, even though I'm. Broke. Oh yeah. You know, I would say I would say I probably have a fear of failure, but not not in a traditional sense. Like only in the anxiety. It's something. Oh, I thought that you were going to say in the ED it, way. Yeah. It's something that something that kind of sort of gets to me sometimes. Mm. That. But it also, like, I mean, it gets to me a lot, but I feel like it's also part of my drive. You know what I mean? Exactly. If I didn't have that anxiety and, like, slight fear, I wouldn't give a fuck. I wouldn't have made yeah. it this far at all. I'm like, whatever. The fact that every day I wake up, like, oh, my God, I have to get up to the fucking studio. Right. I'm going to fuck shit up. Like, I don't know what's going to go next. Like, <laughs> I know I'm making it up as I go along. I know I'm making it up as I go. Yeah. And I, I'm the exactly. I talk about anxiety as my superpower and something I'm not willing to let people take away from me. <laughs> that it's it's that's what I've always said about my ADHD. Right. <laughs> it keeps you know what? Yeah, I've got a million ideas. No, I don't want to take meds for that. You're right. It's like what the fuck? I like uh having twenty more ideas than everyone else in the room in the same ten minute period, you know. Well, my argument is that it's neural diversity. That that's the <laughs> that that's the representation of autism as well. That there's so yeah. we're it's trying to figure out how evolutionarily our brains can deal with that much opportunity coming yeah coming in all at once it's actually it was actually a ted talk i listened to years ago the guy actually said that and he said that we are evolving through adhd and any other uh -huh. hyperactive or autism well that i so i'm we occasionally we've been on a couple times with a group that's working on mental health reform and okay my argument is that a the idea that we refer to things as mental health with some kind of stigma is an issue because we don't refer to physical health like that. Of course, we have mental health. Right. Mental, hello, we have one of those. But that the amazing mutations and evolution going on in our brains are like the protein spikes of a virus. It's looking for right. keys to locks. And if we beat everybody down and try and make them the same, we're throwing away all the keys to locks we've never yeah. seen. You know, like You're retro the, the greatest asset in this world wasted is perspective. Is you know what that in our world right now, what you do is we trademark this and we trademark that. And so you have people all over the world working on a similar problem, but not communicating with each other, not trying to solve it, but <laughs> trying to figure out how to make the dollar off it. And right, because they're working against their peers instead of with them. Yeah, and that's absolutely. how we that's one of the that styles back to at the studios and stuff like how we are now. Like we like we tell everybody in here, like we are not here. We are not your competition. Like your competition is no. the record labels and all these other people who aren't even artists who are trying to make a dollar off of you. The leeches in the middle. For no reason. I mean, we're out here just trying to spread what we got. The music, you know. Man, yeah. Any place, any place is doing music. Any place is doing something positive and trying to trying to spread positivity. I feel like is a friend. I'd like and to start yeah, exactly. a website called Muse. That's like Facebook just for artists, but it's like Facebook meets. Um, shoot that fund me place there's Not a couple fund me, there's a couple different so that artists would be up there with their own stores each one would have a facebook page like right. a, a muse page a muse page yeah. but what it means like is Beat stars is kind of like that almost you can kind of make your own page and put your stuff up there there's a couple Not different a di does it have yeah. a place for financial support from your um supporters supporters yeah the idea that okay i mean if you, i'll just keep making music and support me right but right I, 
crowd crowdfunded um shoot what'd you call it back in the day when you know the pope would go buy a nice artist and keep him around <laughs> but crowdfunded yeah like the rest of us believe in the idea that music is meaningful and we want to support the people that make it the is it artists sponsorship no, no it's, it's yeah i my brain patronage is, patronage there we go yeah that that used to be the idea that's how you end up with the sistine chapel and stuff that the big money was with the churches but what if what we, if we did that for artists what if we crowdfunded that why do the the ultra rich not what? crowdfund more artists <laughs> It's a lot of like what the shows are too. I mean, when we go out there, that's what we kind of try to go for with the shows and stuff. And when we do shows, we kind of try to give artists that equal opportunity to make money off of the tickets and make money off of anything there and be able to sell their merch and kind of make money off of themselves, off of their fans. You know what I mean? Right. How, so how do you guys set that up? So you guys were at Scully's last Thursday. Yeah. And I forget how many artists there were. It was a good, a good number. So I assume Scully's has an in. And you guys have to sell X number of tickets. Is that the traditional getting the venue I mean, kind of deal? No. So it's basically we pay all the stuff up front, and then you mean for whoever artists we're bringing out. If it's no, if it's no uh, like mainstream or anything like that, then it's just local, like it was. Then what we do is we just literally put the payment down for the venue, and then we go out and talk to other artists, see if they want to get on with it. Right. If they do, then we help them. <clears throat> do promo, photo shoots, stuff like that, small videos, and then we give them tickets. So the ticket sales, you the first couple, you get um, you pay you get like five dollars off of each one. But then after you sell ten tickets, you get ten dollars. And then after you sell, if you sell over fifty tickets, you get to keep all of the all of the sales. So basically, it's just the incentive that the more tickets you sell, the more fans of your fans you're bringing, the more money you can make for your pocket. Just like you would make off of streams online, but oh, you absolutely. get to do it instantly. Well, my question, so what if you don't manage to sell some tickets? Or how many? Do you, well, then you, you, I mean, then you didn't put your hustle in and work as an artist. I mean, well, no, I agree. No, I, I'm, it's try, a, it's I'm trying a, it's to figure a, it's out. It's a hard game and it's not I agree. easy. And some people, some people want to be like, oh, I deserve to get this slot for X or Z. I shouldn't have to sell tickets. And that's cool. Some artists don't have to sell tickets, but that's because they're guaranteeing to bring 20 plus people or however many people that they would have sold the tickets. And then that's money out of their pocket that they're not going to make. Oh, I follow you. know what you. I mean? Right. Because like I could, if I do a show right now, I could show up, put my name on a flyer, and I know that I could make one little post and probably get 15 to 20 people out. Okay, right. So like right. I've had people call me when they're doing a show and they're like, oh, well, we haven't really sold many tickets. You want to jump on it? And I'll jump on it and help them out. You know what I mean? If you if you don't have that kind of pool, then you have to get out here and make that kind of pool for yourself. I have that pool because I was out here on foot, on high street, in the bars, you know what I mean, at other shows, talking to people, networking, selling the tickets. You know what I mean? If you're not willing to do that, then I don't feel like you're willing to work hard enough for yourself. It's like somebody saying, oh, I got this music, but I won't pay for myself to go to the studio until I get signed. Hmm. Well, no, and I'm not. You know what I mean, like, I'm not, you, have I'm, to, you have to put that effort in. It's first literally a trying to, to understand get any it. sort of recognition. I feel like. So, how many tickets are you looking for somebody to sell to get on the? Bill? I mean, it really doesn't matter. It's it's the fact that I probably want. We we try to do our due diligence when we do the show, right? To right. where we find people who are willing and are going to sell the tickets. Oh, absolutely! You know I mean? No, no, no. I'm and, we've had and I'm times trying to understand like, it. Oh, okay. I didn't sell any tickets. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you can't perform. Oh, right, right. I got you. Know you. What I mean? But I'm you're, just, but you're going to question gonna next time around. People, we're going to figure it out. We, we also do our promotions and stuff. So we're going to make, I mean, our pocket's there. We're just trying to help the artist to learn that it's not going to be done by somebody else. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And if that means you go out and I tell you to sell 10 tickets and you come back and you only sold one, I'm like, okay, that's cool. We're even, you know what I mean? But right, right. if you want to do it next time, you're going to have to figure out what the problem was. You're going to have to go up that next step i'm not going to be able to put you on another show until you can carry your own weight type shit you know what i mean well no i get that okay no i follow and then we also do shows where it's not like that like we do free shows and stuff like that as well too okay okay no i i believe in all of it and literally so the interesting thing is i've always got questions it's always a okay so how does that piece work so because we had a, a weird promotional one reach out to an artist and it felt con e if that makes sense, like they, yes, they, you, you'll see them sink the heart first, and then they flip it to land the hook, is mm-hmm. how it felt. And it's like, oh, you got to get they these people have to buy tickets and stuff like that. 
Well, and then it was, right. and it's it's one of those ones where it's set in a contest format. So the idea yeah. that well, they I, they originally said it was an open mic, and then they said that's that what pissed me the off. I've bought onto stuff like that. I've bought onto stuff like that before. I just did one with Benny the Butcher, not too long ago. Oh shit! Um, and it was like kind of like that. I said, paid three hundred bucks, and they're like, okay, rap on a beat, and then send it in, and then da 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 da, and this and that, and it's. It's going to be, you're going to do this, and then we get there, and they change the whole situation around. Like, oh, if you want to rap with him, you got to pay this, and da-da-da. Oh, like, oh. You know what I mean? So, like, there's always going to be those situations. Some of them are worth it, and some of them, you know what I mean? It will just put you some in the room with those people. And when you can, a lot of the time, what I've came to realize in those situations, if you kind of just go and call those people out, mm. they kind of have, like, it'll either it'll go one of two ways. You know what I mean? They're either going to respect you and help you out, or they're going to be like, oh, well, too bad, you know what I mean? But you learned your lesson either way. Well, it's valid point. Valid point. I mean, we're pushing hard for the idea we want to see more collaboration in this in, in this form of music. Well, that no, most definitely. And then, and like, the, with the shows and stuff, my big thing that we're trying to push for is like, we don't want, I don't want people out here doing shows and being a promoter if you're not an artist or at least been an artist and understand the struggle and trying you to, to help. Feel you're it. just out no, here trying yeah. to throw a show to make money then you're really just out here, like you said earlier, you know what I mean? You're just out here for yourself. Well, You're not really trying to do anything extra for the community or the, mm, the, okay. the people around us. You know? Part of but, it I mean, is... I guess there's always those exceptions. There's always those exceptions. I'm sure there's somebody out there with money who wants to help us, who's never done music before. It's just in my experience, it's always been, <laughs> if they, they part want of the something. scene, like the music, then they're just, yeah, they want something. Part they of it just... is I want to not... I want to not even care about the money piece. I just want to perform. Right. You know? Yep. And most definitely. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's fun, funner than anything is just being able to go up there and not worry about it. You know, and yeah. then there's, there's, we'll there's definitely, there's opportunities and stuff, but also at the end of the day, we all have bills to pay and we all got to eat. And I really don't want to work a regular job. So I'm like gonna, when it bills? comes down I'm to, supposed to pay things, the bills, we've got to you know, make money sometime. I'm supposed to pay the bills. Fuck the bills. Right. <laughs> No, I'm telling that, you know what, one of the things that delighted us is where we're not active where you are is in the scene itself and actively promoting venues. And we've got artists here locally that are looking for those kinds of opportunities that RJ. Over yeah, there, we can help out in any he's sort drooling. of way there, too. Like we're, we're in these venues and we have spots in Cleveland and Kentucky and you know, I mean, other other areas as well. Not just here in Ohio. We've been doing this religiously for a while now you're we needed so so the weirdness about everything going on with us is we'll start thinking about a piece and then i'll walk into a hair dye place <laughs> um that's how it feels we were literally we were literally like talking i think the same week that he came back and told me about you we had a conversation about we're gonna do we're gonna start doing open mics and stuff that we started about talking about the need to do shows. Yeah. And so then I walk into the hair dye place of all places and first get the <laughs> get the hookup on going down to GameStop to get the official mm. uh what's the dude with the funny tail? Crash Bandicoot? No, uh Pikachu. Pikachu. There we go. <laughs> Surprise Pokemon. Pikachu face. There we go. It was a Pikachu. And that and hooked me up with this slip of paper that I'll keep forever that says Jay Horns on it. Right. And <laughs> Shithouse Records. <laughs> that I tagged them both. I tagged Jay Horns and Shithouse. Oh. Uh, yeah. Giving you the promo. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's the the label and then that's me and the name of the new shop is Jay Horns Entertainment <laughs> Studios. I'm so what do you think you know? We've been on this journey. I I find myself over and over again. I don't fucking know. But what do you know? <laughs> but what do I know? Um, I know that uh, this is just the beginning. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know there's a lot more to go. Mm. That's what I know. <laughs> I, I, I tend to, I, I look at Ross and I'll say, no, you go into each day like you were born this morning and are amazed by what's in front of you like you've never seen it before and act like you're... Yeah, you can't... That you never truly know anything until you accept you know nothing anyway. So yeah, you've never been here before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you've it's, never been here you before. Have presumptions about your surroundings is the second you're wrong. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. As soon as you assume. Mm -hmm. 
What do you wish you knew? <laughs> what do I wish I knew? I wish I knew everything I know now 10 years ago. <laughs> Ooh, right? <laughs> It's the weirdest thing you'll Money think. Money would have been spent a little bit Oof. better, but ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck you. I like That's that. what I wish. I'm I doing. like that. <laughs> if I could have some of them ducats back, I'd appreciate it right about Man. now. Just not even back. Just move them in different directions. I wish I could bit, move you know? back about a year. Yeah. Really? I yeah, I'd make some better money but, decisions. But you wouldn't. Maybe we never would have met. Well, you wouldn't have needed a place to stay. <laughs> Maybe. See? See, if you'd been on top of your and money, that's the same you... aspect. It's like, they don't really want to change anything. It's not. I'm. I'm happy. Just not like a, I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's good to be here, and if I hadn't fucked that up, I wouldn't be. That's a good point. Right. I, exactly. One hundred percent. That's a good point. Because I would not have got this store if I didn't fuck up my money and was like, "Wait a second, where did twenty thousand dollars go? Like, I need to do something productive." <laughs> Dude, with you even pick the fucking number I ask about. Holy shit. <laughs> Like, dude, I was, I've, I've never thought, like, I was so young and I fucking caught my mom's house on fire on accident, <laughs> quote unquote. Jeez. And we got a, we got a big insurance check for it, you know, and uh, I was like, I had like $20,000 and I was like, oh man, $20,000, I can do so much stuff with this. And it was just like, next thing you know, I, you know, I mean, got a house, uh, rented a house and car and all this other stuff. And I'm like, damn, I'm broke again. Well, I'll make it back. And then. I make twenty thousand dollars again, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna do all these things, and then <laughs> same place. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> if you had told me as a kid I would have had twenty thousand dollars multiple times, I'd been like, we are millionaires. <laughs> and it goes so quick. It sounds like a lot it's, of money. It really does. And currently, I but swear, when you're really trying to do stuff in the, like out here, and it's like, it's, it's a lot, you know. It's when you're trying to help people and stuff like that too. It's not. For, for us to be I'm rolling sure if I'd balls spent it all deep. Myself, I'd been in a better place, but I wouldn't have the people around me that are as amazing as they are. You to wouldn't help have found them. You know what I mean? You wouldn't have found them. Yeah. No, not at all. Like cool. the team I. Yeah, go ahead. Right now, my dude Tooth um, and Wolf and like my producers Durr and just the whole at work situation. Like they're. All these people I got in my corner are just so solid right now. It's I'm so blessed. It's ridiculous. I, I agree. I, I, you know what? That's how I feel too. I, I endlessly I feel that way. That, and time, yeah. and time and again, it's like people going, "Oh God, I'm amazed by what you're doing." I'm like, "No, I'm just, dude, I'm just glad you gave us happy to be little, here." Yeah, I'm glad you gave us some of your time. That, I think the most valuable thing you can give me, Jay, as much as I there are, I can't wait for the conversations and the things that are going to come out of it and the way we work together. And I can't get wait to get over to the studio, and I just. The most valuable thing you can give me, though, is your time. And exactly. 100%. Before, before you give that speech, I have one more question. I know that. I have yeah. one more question. Who's on first? No. No, who's on first? No. That's not the question. The real question is, why are you here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> why am I here? Through an uns. A series of unfortunate events. <laughs> Shouts out to Lemony Snicket. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. There is nothing. There is nothing uh, basic or straight lined about how I got here. That is for damn sure. And I could not even begin to explain that. <laughs> the path of the of sledgehammer. Time. I've been beating we'll my head the, with a sledgehammer. That goes, that goes in the movie. <laughs> yeah. I, right. That's right. a feature film. Ten years from now. The I, path of the sledgehammer. I, I call it the path of the sledgehammer. That, what did I learn? To stop hitting myself. But I learned. <laughs> but I learned a lot hitting myself. <laughs> oh man, I've got myself in the shin a couple times with a sledgehammer while I was doing construction. That does not. That is not fun. But when you look back <laughs> on life, isn't that sort of how it felt? <laughs> Oh yeah, like you definitely. just kept making mistakes over and over and over, and you're like, "Why?" I tell my kids what that all the doing? time. Like, if you guys are sad that you stubbed your toe now, like, give it ten years. Like, this is gonna add up. I did. I messed so many things up before I came. The person mm. that was like, "Hey, it's been three days. And I ain't fuck something up today." Hallelujah. Uh, you know what? Whether you go with Spider Man or Chubbawamba, you know what? I get. N- Chumbawamba, tub pumping. <laughs> but I get, but I get up again. Never gonna keep me down. You know what? The definition exactly. of success isn't how many times you fall down. It's how many times <laughs> you get back up again? That's 
That's funny because like that was like one of the other CDs in my CD player that day that I jumped to the table. <laughs> I, was like, I, never, I never knew what the hell they were talking about. They're like whiskey drink. I was like, what the fuck is that? That was that Kool Aid in the fridge. <laughs> Mine was, and long before Chubba Wumba, it was midnight. We were staying at a friend's house. I was probably under the age of ten when we got into the liquor cabinet and drank very little, for the record. But I remember uh, I did a note. I dived off the piano onto the fold-out bed, not understanding at that age the steel beam in the middle, but not telling any adults about how I racked my entire spine. <laughs> I walked around wrong for days, but couldn't tell anybody because we, <laughs> we got into the liquor cabinet. <laughs> couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> we were up at night watching Wolfman Jack monster movies. That's how frigging old oh I am. Oh, my <laughs> Dude, I can't wait. I I'm full of energy, brother. I, I, I feel so connected to where you're coming from. I No, most definitely. Same here. I You know what? G give me give me a where is it at. So is it the studio's open, right? You've got the first room done. Is that the deal? Yeah, I got Studio A open. Uh, it's uh, 1142 South High Street. It's right across the street from the White Castle. I know it well. The okay. Green lawn right there. That's the best White Castle to go for entertainment. Yeah, yeah. it is. Most definitely. I, I sit out front and watch it all happen all the time. That we were sitting in there, oh, it was midnight, 1 a.m., and the drunk woman in the drive through <laughs> first off, drove through the car in front of her and then went over the ledge towards Green Lawn. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And did not realize what was going. On. No, it. And then probably did not stop and just kept going, huh? Uh, no, stuck there. Got got wedged over the top so oh. that the wheels weren't <laughs> touching the ground. Best part. Oh, that's big three. Car behind her was a police officer getting ready to get coffee that just followed her to the edge slowly and then stopped. Oh my goodness! And so, that's the perfect. You could sit inside that place safe, bulletproof glass. You know the whole nine. <laughs> For both you yeah, and the help. Like, Derelict areas, as I like to call them, um, are like the best. You don't even need a t TV. You just sit out front and watch the world go by. Watch the world go. I'm just sitting, sitting here watching, watching the, the wheels, wheels go round and round. <laughs> oh, I cracked. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got anything you want to plug before? What all you want to plug, brother? Give me some plugs. Um, I mean, not really, man. I I appreciate you guys and all all the uh, things you guys did for me. And you know, I mean, it was a great talk. Uh, J Horns, you know, J Horns Entertainment Studios up here on South High Street. Um, you can get at me on Facebook or come on by. Honestly, we're open sure. most of the time. I got a sign out front. I'll tell you when if we're open or not. So <laughs> I got a thing I turn on. <laughs> if I'm there, the lights on. Stop by. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out hours still, you know, I'm just like, whatever, I'll click it on when I'm here. It's crazy that we finally sat down a week ago Monday and really got a grip on schedule that it, it it's a thing, you know, that <laughs> But with the studio, it's kind of impossible, man, because you can't tell me that if someone called you at midnight and you weren't doing shit, you wouldn't drive up there and get to work. Right, right. Well, the advantage I have is... I've done it numerous times. We've been here till 4 in the morning the last couple of nights, actually. Dude, if the energy's right, the energy's right. You can it is, feel man. it. And that's, okay, and that's like this for me. I, I literally went through a spell where I, I looked at Ross. There was a week we weren't scheduled as heavy. And I said, I need more of them. They're part of how I stay right the with the world. Arrow. Yeah. Right, exactly. And if it wasn't for me being able to like actually get some like construction stuff done in here in between the time, <laughs> I'd feel the same way. But yeah. I'm looking at it as a blessing either way. So when they're not in here, I'm fucking swinging the hammer. <laughs> and people... then when they are, I'm like, okay, pressing the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> nice. When people say stuff like like uh, music keeps me out of trouble, that's how I feel about this stuff. Like mm. it keeps me out of my anxiety. Yes. Yeah, it gives me other, like, other things I do to cure my anxiety are not so healthy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, <laughs> they claim some they of that's good for me. Ways. 
it's medical yeah. it's medicinal yeah. it doesn't it's... oh i mean yeah that's great you know? well and then <laughs> psychoactive is just I have to take oxygen breaks between the reefer smoke psychoactive is just means i'm trying to figure stuff out get off my back yeah. <laughs> dude we're gonna have so many conversations some on air some off air and i can't wait to get down there brother i well, thank... definitely man i appreciate you guys hit me up whenever you want thank we'll you. talk more okay. good deal have a good night you too right, brother you, you too, too. All right, yeah. Okay, we're off the air now, I think. We are. I think he hung up. Oh, okay.